This is Beach Weekly. Welcome to Season 9, Episode 10 of Beach Weekly, a podcast created and produced by Long Beach State student-run newspaper, The Daily 49er. My name is Leila Nunez, and I'll be filling in for our lovely podcast editor, Isabel Solaji, as she studies away from midterms. Don't worry, everyone. She will be back next week. Good luck, Isabel, and good luck to everyone else who has midterms. This week, we're keeping it short and simple. I'll be going over campus and city news before I hand it off to Arts and Life editor Katie Gurley on her segment, Son of a Beach. I've been waiting to do that for so long. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into this week's episode. Smorgasbord is back. ASI announced last week that the long-awaited event is returning to CSULB Friday, October 28th. Originally postponed due to Tropical Storm K, Smorgasbord will be offering fun and games to Long Beach students. The free on-campus carnival will include carnival rides, food trucks, and so much more. It's a nice little break if you do have midterms. This event is only open to current CSULB students this year for health and safety purposes. Student IDs will be checked and students will also have to sign a waiver of liability upon entry. Those under 18 years old are required to have a parent or guardian sign the waiver as well. Now, have you guys visited the ASI Beach Kitchen? The ASI Beach Kitchen, which opened a few months ago in May, allows for students at CSULB to learn how to cook proper nutritional meals to offer more food options to college students in place of the ramen noodles we all know and love. The kitchen is partnered with off-campus organizations such as Long Beach Organic, who have been donating to CSULB since 2020, and they have eight community gardens here in Long Beach. The kitchen is useful to anyone who is wanting to learn how to prepare more wholesome meals, who want to learn how to shop for these nutritional ingredients, and it also offers advice to all students who may be dealing with food insecurities. Moving on to Long Beach news, this week a man went on a stabbing spree at Alameda's Beach and resulted in three wounded and one dead. The first stabbing was reported early Monday morning, where a woman was found suffering from multiple stab wounds and later died in the hospital. The other victims were found at scenes just one minute away from each other. The suspect arrested was identified as Johan Sharp, a 21-year-old man of Long Beach who is said to be experiencing homelessness. In world news, British Prime Minister Liz Truss quit Thursday after 45 days in office, becoming the shortest-serving leader in the country's history. Truss was anointed on September 6th in place of former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Liz Truss's failed tax cut plan led to a rebellion within her own party. This plan significantly affected the value of the pound and drove up the cost of mortgages in the UK. The country is currently facing a cost of living crisis and an unstable economy. And now the Conservative Party is currently in the process of a new leadership election. All right, and that's it for news. Now let's hand over the mic to Katie Gurley for her pop culture portion of the pod. Hey, everyone, this is Katie, and I'm here today to talk about some of the hottest topics in pop culture this week in a segment I like to call Son of a Beach. Hallelujah. Y'all, a miracle must have happened because Selena Gomez and Hailey Bieber appeared to have made up. The two were photographed, hugging, and posed closely together for the cameras at the 2022 Academy Museum Gala in Los Angeles on October 15th. As y'all heard me talk on Son of a Beach a few weeks back, you already know that Selena Gomez and Hailey Bieber had rumored beef with each other over the years, and the tension was high whenever they were spotted at the same event. Also, I mentioned them in a segment because of Bieber's appearance on the Call Her Daddy podcast and Gomez documentary coming out. The moment these photos were out in the public, social media went crazy. Talk about an iconic moment for them both. This is great. I feel like our mystery solved, guys. <laughs> it's like I'm watching the Discovery Channel, like a rare sighting. I don't even know how that even like went down. Imagine them seeing each other at the event. Like who approached who first? Did Haley go to Selena or did Selena go to Haley? I feel like Haley went to Selena first. I'm not gonna lie to like you know just bridge that tension away. Like just put it away. I don't know. Ah, it must have been awkward at first, but you know like the cameras around, they're like. Oh, you know but i'm glad to see this finally solved i've seen so many memes about this situation like um i read one on twitter someone posted this is the poses that they did together justin bieber has it as his phone wallpaper i'm just like (laughs) people were ready with the memes but jokes aside i'm glad that we got this like closing chapter i'm not sure if it's a 
PR stunt or if they're actually, you know, closing this chapter and moving on and becoming friends, whether they're not friendly or, you know, just make peace with each other, even though it's rumored, you know, it's been going on for over six years, this rumored beef between the two. I'm just really happy. And Selena stands for what she believes in, which is kindness. And you see it here. After all that she's been through, she's able to, you know, befriend Haley. And that's not even coming from the biggest Selena Gomez fan, but they're both awesome and I'm wishing them the best. The haters gonna hate, 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 hate. <laughs> 11-time Grammy Award winner Taylor Swift finally dropped her long-awaited 10th studio album titled Midnight's on Friday, October 21st. This is Swift's first original album within the past two years, and she explained the meaning behind the album on her Twitter following its release. Midnight's is a collage of intensity, highs and lows, and ebbs and flows, she said. Life can be dark, starry, cloudy, terrifying, electrifying, hot, cold, romantic, or lonely, just like Midnight's. The album is made up of what Taylor said, the stories of 13 sleepless nights scattered throughout my life. Swifties and even some music critics are enjoying the new album as it has at least 80% positive rating across streaming platforms. Songs Anti-Hero, Snow on the Beach featuring Lana Del Rey, and Midnight Rain are just some of the 13 tracks featured in Swift's album. This album is everywhere, you guys. I work at a big retail place i won't say exactly who but there's like a whole display of taylor swift albums there's records too not just cds but records of this new album and i can say i'm also not a fan of her music now i prefer her older songs like her country music but i know she's re-recording her albums her prior albums to regain rights to those which is awesome i love seeing her stand up for herself and I'm actually excited for this album. I think I might take a listen because there's some cool titles for this, for some of these songs. I've actually heard some of them. Antihero is really good. And I have some friends that are Swifties, like hardcore Swifties, and I want to get their opinion. But before I get their opinion, I want to listen to the album so it makes more sense. But kudos to Taylor Swift for making this album about sleepless nights. And I actually suffer from sleep paralysis. So I wonder, I'm curious if there's going to be any songs related to that and how it correlates to her music in general. But anywho, on October 18th, Roxy Washington, the mother of George Floyd's daughter, announced the Floyd family will be filing a $250 million lawsuit against rapper Kanye West, also known as Ye, over his recent statements about Floyd's death on the podcast Drink Champs on Saturday. Ye alleged that Floyd's death was due to a fentanyl overdose and denied that Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin pressed his knee against the neck of Floyd, which occurred for a total of 9 minutes and 29 seconds during an arrest outside a Cup Foods grocery store. The lawsuit against Ye and his associates include harassment, misappropriation, defamation, and infliction of emotional distress seeking $250 million in damages, according to a statement from Washington's attorneys. Kanye's comments are a repugnant attempt to discount George Floyd's life and to profit from his inhumane death, said attorney Pat D. Dixon III. We will hold Mr. West accountable for his flagrant remarks against Mr. Floyd's legacy. Following Ye's appearance on Drink Champs, the episode was pulled from social media earlier this week. According to The Hollywood Reporter, a representative for the program said, Drink Champs prides itself on its ability to allow a free flow of ideas within the hip-hop community. That being said, unfortunately, the recent interview with Kanye West contained false and hurtful information regarding the circumstances surrounding the murder of George Floyd. And all I'll say about this, if you mess around, you will find out. And he's definitely finding out. Kanye has been all over the place, but you just gotta be careful. That's all I'll say about this. Mess around and you will find out. And it's finally happening, so... 
It seems like Netflix is starting to understand that we're college students because they announced a lower-priced $6.99 plan to start in November. But there's a catch. The Basic with Ads plan will include 15 to 30 second ads before and during shows and films, as well as contain a smaller selection of content due to licensing restrictions. Also, ads are set to appear about 4 to 5 minutes per hour, and this plan will not allow subscribers to download content. According to NPR, the Basic with Ads plan will be available in 12 countries and will roll out in the United States on November 3rd. As a broke college student, this sounds very nice, but sometimes we can be very impatient. You know, when we have like warm food, I like to watch movies around the same time so you can just enjoy your warm food and relax, you know, but with the ads going on, it's going to be so hard to binge watch an episode. Like in general, like let's say a show is an hour long and you're going to have four to five of those per hour. You might as well just pay the extra three dollars, which I know that's what they're trying to do, which is what we're not going to do. I feel like six ninety nine is what it used to be before all of this, like two, three years back. I was paying like six ninety nine for the basic plan. But now the basic plan, I believe, is nine ninety nine. So please, Netflix, think about the college students. <laughs> But anywho, I'm glad it's $6.99. We'll see how it rolled out. You know what else seems too good to be true? The When We Were Young Festival. And that's the tea. <laughs> anywho, it's midterm season and I appreciate you listening in. After your last exam, celebrate by listening to Tay Tay's new album or binge watch some movies on Netflix with that college budget friendly subscription. <laughs> Before I go, I just want to say thank you for listening. This has been Katie here. See you next time on Son of a Beach. All right, and that is it for Season 9, Episode 10 of Beach Weekly. As always, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate every single one of you. If you want to learn more about the stories we discussed today, go check out our website at daily49er.com, where you can also find the rest of our content in arts and life, multimedia, opinions, and more. Also, if you want to be more informed, follow us on socials at Daily 49er so you don't miss anything that happens on campus. We do post daily. I hope everyone has a great week. If you do have midterms, good luck. Finish strong. It was an honor being able to host Beach Weekly for you guys. Have a good one and thank you.